Welcome back to Unit 7, Day 6. We are continuing on with kites. So in the last video, we looked at our special property of kites. We have our sides and our top and our tail. Our side-to-side -side angles are congruent. Our diagonals intersect each other at a 90-degree angle. The top-to-tail diagonal bisects those top and tail angles, and it bisects the side-to-side -side diagonals. Your side angles are not bisected. Your top and your tail diagonal is not bisected. All right, let's move on with example two. Erin is making a kite based on the pattern below. She wants to add trim around the border. How much trim does Erin need to cover the edges of the kite? All right, so as I work through this one, the first thing I'm going to see is I'm going to look at my sides and try to figure out how long they are. Because if I'm trying to put trim all the way around this figure, that's basically just asking me what is the perimeter of this kite, right? It's just a fancy way of asking me the perimeter of the kite. So let's say I wanted to start by finding out how long, I'm just doing it like this because it's trim on the kite and I thought it'd be prettier if it was a little scalloped trim on my kite. If I want to know how long that piece there is, okay? I can use the fact that I know my diagonals intersect at a 90 degree angle, okay? I know one side is 52, and I know that this top to tail diagonal, that's my tail, this is the top, I know the top to tail diagonal bisects the side to side diagonal, so I know those two pieces are equal. If the whole diagonal is 64, that means each one of these little sides is 32, so that 32 and 32 makes the whole length 64. So now, I have enough to use Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse of this triangle. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. If I'm trying to find the hypotenuse, I'm going to add in my square root. My two numbers are 52 and 32. I put the bigger one in first always. And that's going to be 52 squared is 2,704, oops, 704, and 32 squared is 1,024. So that's going to be the square root of 2,704 plus 1,024 is going to be 3,728, which is about, I'm going to round to three decimal places, the square root of 3,728 is 61, about 61.057, if I round correctly, and these are inches. And it's not area like it was in the last lesson, so I don't, oops, I don't have to put that square on there. It's just plain old inches. So this one here is 61 point. 057. What's nice is that means I've already done the work for this one, 61.057. Okay. All right, now let's find the trim for this these two sides. I'm going to do one at a time. I'm going to do this one, which I know is going to be the same as that one. Same exact process. I know this side here is 13. I know I have a 90 degree angle here, and I know this piece here is 32. I'm looking for the hypotenuse, so inside my square root, when I'm looking for a hypotenuse, I know I'm going to add. 32 and 13, I always put the bigger number in first, 32 squared and 13 squared. I already did 32 squared, it was 1,024. And then 13 squared, 13 times 13 is 169. And then I add those two together. And I get 100, or sorry, 1,193. And when I square root that, I get 34.5398. So that's actually going to become 40. 34.540 for both of these. OK, 
Okay. All right. So then what I need to do, it says how much trim do we need to cover the edges of the kite? We need to add all four of them together and we need to find the perimeter to find how much trim she needs. So it's going to be the 61.057 plus the 61.057 plus the 34.504 plus the 34.504 or sorry 540 oh. that's going to tell me how much trim I need 61.057 plus 61.057 plus 34.540 plus 34.540. If I hit all the buttons right, we should be 248.137 inches. Okay. Now let's say she goes to Hobby Lobby or wherever she goes and they, they're like, oh, you have to buy it by the yard or by the foot. Okay. So let's say she's buying it by the foot. Well, what would I still need to do to this? I'd have to then divide this by 12, right? So if I divide that by 12, I need 20.6781 feet. Now, when I go to Hobby Lobby, they're not going to let me buy 0 .6781 of a foot, right? So I'll probably have to buy that whole other foot or figure out how many other inches that's going to need to be, okay? So that's how much total trim in inches she's going to need, but be careful. Sometimes they're going to ask you for the answer, potentially, in different units. So make sure you're paying attention, especially on a word problem like this, okay? Let's look at example three. Find each angle measure in the figure below. When I'm doing these problems, I really like these kind of problems. These make me, they're just like doing like a Sudoku or a puzzle or something. They're super fun for me. Um, instead of going, okay, EFG, let me find that over here and then figure out what it is. I just like to blanket go and say, I'm just going to figure out what all those angles are and be done with it. Okay, like I already know this is my tail. And this is my top. And if you get those two backwards, it's okay. You're just flying upside down. It's okay. Um, the important thing is that the two that come together where they, they're different that come together, those are, have to be your sides, right? So side and side. Okay. My first property says that my opposite angles that are side to side are congruent. So my side to side angles have to be equal. So if this one's 113, then the other one's also going to be 113. I'm going to do these. My side to side angles are equal. Okay. Then I go, well, hold on. This is a quadrilateral, which means all four of those angles, they have to add up to 360 because it's a quadrilateral. So it still has all those quadrilateral properties. So the four angles in a quadrilateral, because it's really two triangles that are next to each other, they have to add up to 360 because 180 and 180. So I'm going to add the three angles I already know, 113, 113, and 44. So that's 6, 10, 4, 5, 6, 7, 270, and I know I'm a total of 360. So 360 minus 270, I believe, is 90. Is 90. So that means this angle here is a right angle. That's fun. I'm just going to put the right angle box there. Okay. All right. 90 degrees. I'm going to write it in there too for fun. So that way if you're looking at it and not watching the video, maybe you'll know we found it and didn't just already have that there. Okay. So now I'm going to need to find the angles that are created when I draw in the diagonals. So I know, first of all, when I draw in my top to tail diagonal, my top to tail diagonal is going to bisect the top and tail angles. So when I draw this one in, it's going to divide this one into 22 and 22. And it's going to divide this one into 45 and 45. When I draw this one, it's real tempting to say, okay, it's going to divide this in whatever 113 is divided in half. So 50... 56.5, 56.5, 56 56.5. But remember, your side to side angles are not bisected. 
Okay, so you have to figure out what those are. But I do know that my diagonals are perpendicular, so all these angles in here are 90. Okay, so now I know something cool. I immediately go, oh, if I have 45 degrees and 90 degrees, this must be a 45, 45, 90. 45, 45, 90. So now all I need to do is figure out what this is. And I have two ways to do that. I can either subtract the 45 from 113. If I subtract 113 minus 45, that gives me 68. So this angle over here would also be 68. Or the other thing I could do is I could take away the 90 and the 22 from 180, right? Because I can think of this as a little triangle here. Because it is a little triangle here. So I could do 90 plus 22 which is 112, and I could say 180 minus 112, which is also 68. So it doesn't matter which method you use, you're going to get the 68 there. Okay, so now we found all our angles. This part's going to be so easy now. Because all we have to do is find the, it's like an Easter egg hunt now, we just have to find them. So the first thing I'm going to look for is EFG. So E, oops, no, F is up here. E, F, F was in the middle on that one over there. And then where's G? G is over here. E, F, G, that orange angle is 90 degrees. All right, found the first Easter egg. The next one, F, G, H. F, G, H. Well, that one I didn't really even have to find because they gave me that one, right? I already know that's... Oh, well, I didn't because they gave me this 113. I had to find this 113 degrees. All right, my next Easter egg is EHF. E H F. This pink angle is 22 degrees. Then G F H G F H. This angle here is 45 degrees. F E G F E G F E G is 45 degrees. And last but not least, my last little egg that I need to find is EGH. EGH is 68 degrees. Okay? All right, so come on back to the next video and we'll work a little bit more. We'll talk a little bit about lengths of diagonals and finding, using them to find area of our kites. Alright, so come on back for the next video and we'll look at area. Thanks for watching.